Okay, g'day all. Welcome to another video. So it's been a long time. Uh, I actually tried to record this about 15,000 times, but I keep messing up, so... Well, we'll see how we go. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, pixels, coordinates, and colors. So there's a bunch of different little things that we've got to go through for Direct2D before we can actually draw something, so there's not going to be any coding at the end today. Uh, but hopefully we'll get onto that pretty soon. Um, Alright, first things first, a little bit of self-promotion. I made a game a little while back called Scomp. And uh, it's available now for Windows 8 or Windows RT. You just go to the Windows Store and uh, there's a free version or a paid version. So just a little strategy game. Give it a shot if you like. Alright, cheers. Okay, but onto the main crux of the chute. So we've got three different things to go through. Pixels is pretty easy, really. Um, computer graphics are made up of little squares called pixels. Um, if you've ever gotten a, a paint program or you know Adobe Photoshop or your uh, GIMP going and you've zoomed into a, an image, uh, you'll notice that there's a bunch of colored squares. Um, yeah, good. That's about all, that's about all I need to say on that. <laughs> um, coordinates, okay. So the coordinates or the pixels on a computer screen are referenced with coordinates. The computer screen is obviously a 2D grid of some sort and uh, the coordinates on a computer screen are referenced with X and Y. Oh, sorry, the pixels are referenced with X and Y coordinates. So the X axis goes across the screen horizontally from left to right or right to left and the Y axis goes up and down the screen. Now it's a little bit weird but with with computer programming generally and uh, Direct2D is uh, certainly an example of this. Um, the origin is in the top left corner, and as we move across the screen, we're increasing the X axis. So this right up here is pixel 0, 0, and beside that to the right would be pixel 1, 0, and underneath that 0, 0 pixel, if we go down 1, we would find uh, pixel 0, 1. Which is kind of a bit weird. This is actually the opposite to the way that charts work. So charts or graphs uh, usually the origin will be down in the lower left corner and the y-axis increases as you go upwards. Uh, but graphics is flipped. The uh, y-coordinate is flipped. So in, uh, in graphics programming, as we'll see time and time again, um, the y-coordinate increases as we go down. So this is just how you reference pixels or points on the screen. Um, what we do is we use this uh, point to f structure. So Direct2D gives us a brilliant little namespace called D2D1. And um, one of the uh, helper functions in there is point to f. So this lets you specify a point on the screen. And we'll see this used again and again. Uh, but for now, we'll just kind of describe how it works. Um, it takes two coordinates. The first is the x coordinate, and the second is the y coordinate. So something like uh, point to f 0, 0, 0, 0 uh, would be this top left corner. Yeah, that's the origin. Um, you might also notice that this second example down here, I've got um, the X coordinate is 100 pixels across the screen from the left, uh, but the Y coordinate is 61.5 pixels. So you can actually reference in between um, real pixels on the screen. So 61.5 is obviously between uh, pixel 61 and 62. So yeah, it's going to be here somewhere. All that's going to happen is the graphics card's just going to pretend that it can reference, um, you know, in between pixels, and it's just going to shade a couple of pixels um, to indicate that you've kind of referenced in between a pixel. I hope that makes a bit of sense. But in the end, these uh, these values for point two f they're not even really pixel coordinates. I mean, we'll treat them like that for a while, but you can use matrices and transform things around and you know scale things up and down. So they're not necessarily even pixel coordinates, but it's just good to have a look at it like that at the start. Okay, but moving on to colors. Um, this is really, really interesting. This is just a little bit about the way that the human visual system works. It's, it's absolutely bizarre, really. But <laughs> if you've ever looked really closely at a television screen or a computer monitor when it's displaying white, what you'll see is that it's not actually white. Um, it's red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, over and over again. There's millions of little lights. I think I did a calculation before and I worked out that it's something like across this screen here that I'm working on, there's something like six million little lights. <laughs> That's amazing to think about. You know, as a programmer you're in complete control of six million little lights. I mean, I can't even count to six million. Um, it's incredible. 
Um, anyway, the colour white on a computer monitor is not white at all. It's actually red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, over and over again. So most monitors are RGB devices. That's where you get this uh, red, green, blue from. The colour of each pixel on the screen is actually formed from the intensity of a red, a green and a blue little light. And it's only when you step back from the monitor that your eyes kind of merge all those three little lights together and you see it as a single colour. So every pixel on the screen has red, green and blue. Amazing. Um, what those red, green and blue little, little lights for the pixels are is... Um, well, they're just little lights, but as a programmer we can change the uh, intensity of the red, or the intensity of the green, or the intensity of the blue, and uh, it's through mixing the uh, three intensities of those primary colours that we actually get uh, a single channel, or a single colour uh, for our pixel. Uh, there's a fourth channel called alpha, which we'll look at in just a moment. Um, okay, so how do we actually specify an RGB colour? Well, we use um, D2D1 namespace again, uh, but this time the helper function is colour F. Um, you'll see this D2D1 namespace a lot. It's just a collection of helper functions. Yeah, it's really useful too. I mean, IntelliSense helps you out. If you do D2D1 colon colon, um, IntelliSense in Visual Studio is going to offer you suggestions as to what you, what you might mean, so it's, it's pretty good. Um, anyway, uh, there's a few different ways to specify colours, but usually I use the normalised floats. So each component, red, green and blue, can be from 0 to 1. Uh, 0 meaning 0% and 1 meaning 100%. And yeah, we basically just supply a float for each of the uh, RGB channels. So this example down here would mean 100% red, 25% uh, green and 75% blue. Uh, I don't know what colour that would make. Um, and, and when you actually draw a shape with that, as we'll see a bit later on, when you actually draw a shape with this, it doesn't look like you know red, green, blue, red, green, blue. It, it obviously just looks like a single colour because the, the red, green and blue lights are so small. Uh, and there's a fourth channel that we'll look at in a moment. Okay, just a little bit about uh, mixing colours on computers. This takes a bit of getting used to, but after a while you do start to, you do start to know how to make a bunch of basic colours. Uh, if you've ever worked with paints, and, and I haven't, but <laughs> but I can remember from school how they work. Um, when you're mixing paints, uh, the primary colours are red, yellow and blue. Uh, but it's a bit different when you're using the spectrum or when you're using programming. So the primary colours for a computer monitor are obviously red, green and blue. And here's a few examples of mixing colours together. So if you supply zero for all of these values, um, what you're effectively doing there is switching off the red, green and blue um, little lights for a pixel and you get black. Yeah. Uh, or you can turn all of the channels up to 100%. So 100% red, 100% green, 100% blue gives you white. Um, and you've got pretty much everything in between. So there's brown down here, be 60% red, 30% green and 10% blue. Yeah, there's, there's literally millions of colours, tens of millions. Um, yeah, good. Um, okay, so this bit I think I might just basically skip over, but you can also supply your colours in hex format if you want. So you can go colour F and then just supply an integer in hex if you'd, if you'd prefer. So this is um, using the HTML format. Yeah, once again, um, well not once again, but your range with hex obviously ranges from 0 to 255, so you've got a byte for each channel pretty much. Yeah. 0 meaning 0% zero and 255 meaning 100% intensity. I think we've got... Yeah, this slide is just a little bit about converting from, what, a hex value to floating point? Yeah, if you want to. Uh, it's pretty easy, really. You just um, separate the integer, the integer hex value into bytes and um, divide each component by 255. And of course you can go the other way as well. So going the other way, if you've got a floating point value, then you just want to multiply those values by 255 and um, round to get some, yeah, some integer in the range from uh, 0 to 255 and then um, squash them all together into your hex value. I don't know. If I, I might just do another video on, on switching between... It'd be a boring video. <laughs> I probably won't. I'm bored just thinking about it. 
Uh, but the alpha channel, okay, so uh, this is this is great. The alpha channel allows transparency. So in DirectX, we've also got the use of a fourth channel whenever we use the color F um, from the D2D1 namespace. So the fourth channel is A, or the alpha component. And the color mode is often specified like this, RGBA color mode. Yeah, there's a bunch of different color modes, but this one, um, RGB and RGBA, are the closest to the way that the monitor actually represents things, like we saw just before, that the monitor is made up of red, green, blue. Um, the alpha channel is most commonly used for transparency. You could, in theory, use it for whatever you want, but it's usually for transparency. Um, an alpha of 0, 0, or 0, 0 0.0 <laughs> means 0% 0 opaque, or completely transparent, in other words. We'll have a look at a few examples in a second. Uh, an alpha channel of 1.0 means 100% opaque. Uh, if you're interested, you can look up Wikipedia's article on alpha compositing. That'll tell you the um, expressions that are actually used um, to mimic transparency. So, as we saw before, the computer monitor actually doesn't have an alpha channel. For each pixel, it's got red, green, and blue lights. Um, so the alpha channel is actually just a little computation the graphics card does uh, in order to make it look like um, you can see through um, different colors. All right, and here's just a bit of an example of the way that the alpha channel looks. So over the very uh, left-hand side here, I've got three colored circles on a beautiful leopard skin rug. Uh, the alpha here is 1, or 100% opaque. You can't see through these circles at all. Uh, and as we move across to the right, we see an alpha channel of 50%. So the color here is about 50%, and 50% is uh, whatever is beneath the color. Yeah, you can clearly see through the circles. Uh, an alpha channel is 0 0.25, while the circles are becoming very dim indeed. You know, you can see, you can see that there are circles there, but yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty transparent. And of course, we can keep, we can keep going till we get an alpha channel of 0, .0 uh, which means that the circles, the, the colors, are completely transparent. You can't see them at all. Um, I'm not sure, but I would probably say that the the graphics card is not even rendering the circles. It might be, but I don't know. You can't see them, so there's no point. Uh, and finally, just if you, uh, you want to specify an alpha channel in your color F, uh, all you want to do is supply a fourth argument. So the first three arguments are RGB in that order, and the fourth argument, if you supply it, is the alpha channel. Um, if you don't supply a fourth argument to, channel, to uh, color F, um, the alpha channel just defaults to 1.0, or 100% opaque. Uh, so this particular example just here would be bright red with 50% uh, transparency. Good stuff. We'll have a look at just playing with all of this stuff once we've looked at um, solid color brushes and shapes, um, which I think we'll do next time. Uh, but for now, it's uh, it's been good, so thanks for watching. See ya.